Hello everyone, greetings from G Krishnan and welcome to my YouTube channel G Krish TV. As you all know, in today's employment arena, we find engineers from the IT field, automobile industry, from the chemical industry and so on. But few aspiring students, they wish to become an engineer relating to aviation. Rather, they want to uh, relate it to the aircraft maintenance. So, in this contest, I have a guest today by name Mr. Deepak Vijayan. Deepak Vijayan, after completing his school education, he joined Regional Engineering College Srinagar. We used to call it as REC Srinagar. After graduating from REC Srinagar, he got employed in the National Domestic Carrier, Indian Airlines, as a graduate engineer trainee. Mr. Deepak Vijayan is a former Deputy GM Engineering of Air India Southern Region. Hello Mr. Deepak Vijayan, welcome to my YouTube channel G Chris TV. Aspiring students will be eager to know and also the parents also will be happy to know whether the, their child can make a career in aviation relating to engineering. From where does he start? Definitely if uh, the student wants to do engineering, uh, aircraft engineering, then after completing his 10 plus 2 with Max, Physics and Chemistry, he can join the three-year course, AME courses conducted by approved organizations of training institutes of approved by DGCA or if he has done willing to do engineering degree, BE degree, he can do either in aeronautical, mechanical, electrical or electronics and join the company as a trainee engineer. So, there are two options. If he does the AME diploma course, then he will, uh, anyway both of them will have to do the module courses conduct examinations conducted by DGCA to become an AME, basic AME course and uh, after becoming an AME, uh, uh, finishing that he can join, uh, he will be given approved courses on the uh, particular type aircrafts, uh, qualifying which he can become an AME who can certify the aircraft. So, the course uh, AME diploma course is for 3 years okay. and uh, it may cost up to 10 lakhs. Okay. depending on the institutions, the list of which is available in the DGC website, which are the approved institutions. Okay. So, that is possible, otherwise he can do engineering also. After completing this AME, can you put the tag as AME, just like you put a DME or a BE, after his name, can you put AME? No, is he it cannot, allowed? No, he cannot put AME because he is not authorized to sign a aircraft with that. Okay. Unless he has got yes, the job yes, yes, yes. uh, on the job uh, with the dealing with the, dealing with the, with the aircraft. Yes. Then only after whatever the license he yes. obtained, then, yes. he, then can he becomes an AME. AME. Yes. Of course, you don't put it as a uh, as a degree after your name. It is mm. more like a licen li uh, license. Some of the institute give uh, BSc degree. BSc in degree. In some of the institutions. Some of them as diploma in uh, AME courses. Okay. So, it is depending on that what degree you have done or a diploma you have done. Okay. But you become a person who can certify the aircraft only after passing the DGCA modules. We, we have different categories of license in DGCA. Okay. That is uh, five categories are there. Huh. Uh, he gets a category A license, then B1, B2, B3 and C, category C. Category A license is basically to do small jobs minor scheduled inspections basically in line maintenance okay whereas a b1 aircraft looks after the airframe and the engines okay and uh, related avionic system to a certain extent and a b2 engineer is basically looking after the electrical instrument communication systems of the aircraft and b3 engineer basically deals with piston engine aircrafts less than 2000 kgs and category C engineer basically is a person who does the major maintenance, certifies the aircraft for release after the major maintenance is carried out, base maintenance is carried out on the aircraft. So, this is possible only after he joins a particular airline? Definitely, he has to join a get, particular airline. Yes, well, airline. When he is doing the course, Super. each institute is uh, linked to a MRO or an airline to get the practical training which is mandatory as per DGCA. So, 30 percent of the training is practical and okay. that is done in the MROs. Okay. So, all this uh, Air India, Goair all had uh, links with them. So, 
most of the domestic airlines yeah. these education institutions do have a tie up they have a, they should have a tie up they should have and a tie only up. then it is recognized then, then only the uh, degree is recognized yes, yes. the present contest now because of the covid where aviation market has mm-hmm. nosed out do you still recommend a course whoever is interested in that uh, uh, aviation engineering definitely anybody who has a passion for aviation he must join this course because flying is the most uh, fastest safest and comfortable way of traveling from place to place so only thing is he should do is medicals and ensure that he doesn't have color blindness because then he cannot have a career in aviation that is one thing before he joins the course okay that is a very important thing after that he can do this course and join and definitely there will be definitely a boom after this covid because okay. traveling people will travel okay. and this is the most uh, comfortable way of traveling from place to place so you can also equally move up in the cadre from one as you were mentioning about the different license of the aircraft so you will be allowed uh, one by one for each training program or uh, simultaneously will be trained on uh, you as you were referring like uh, b1 b2 normally a person takes either b1 or b2 he will take a1 normally he takes a category a license initially it's because it's easier to take that but his scope is very limited only when he becomes a b1 or b2 engineer he is able to certify the aircraft attend all the snags and major mod checks and all that he can do only if he has either b1 and b2 okay it depends upon the individual interest or no it uh, depends uh, on the modules he has cleared cleared yes so uh, module subjects uh, about 11 topics he has to clear and those exams if he clears then he becomes a basic b1 engineer or he can do a okay. b2 engineer depending even though you works for a particular airline hmm. this subject he has to clear he has to clear which is which conducted, is conducted by which agency it's conducted by dgc dgc yes so it it has to be cleared and by and the basic license is endorsed by dgc okay okay so all the licenses and then if he qualifies for the airline industry each type of aircraft which the training he has to obtain separately from authorized training school and then after getting that license the license is also endorsed by dgc okay and he works for the airlines on the authorization given by the airline or the mro based on the dgc license okay Okay. Does it reflect anything on his uh, salary? Yes, yes. The more more the license, the more the salary. Because, salary. Uh, he will be can be utilized okay. better by the airline. You okay. can design different types of aircrafts, and Even his utilization is better. Okay, okay, okay. So that way he can pursue the career. Yes, yes. In uh, engineering, in aviation. Only thing is, throughout his life, he will be undergoing training. Okay. Throughout, from day one to day <laughs> last day. in his uh, career he will be undergoing training okay. and refresher courses he has to update okay. his knowledge okay so so that. in this contest i can ask you uh, you become a dj engineering and retired yeah. uh, how many license you are uh, i mean able to acquire you, what is the duration does it take actually it takes a lot of time lot of time yes. lot of years i got my initial uh, boeing 737 license in 1988 okay i joined in 85 i got my initial license 88 and then in 91 i got my a320 license on v2500 engine okay and uh, on 94 i got my a300 license okay then consequently i have got my 319 321 and 320 neo aircraft endorsement later on as and when the aircrafts came in okay so for each of this type of aircrafts i will have to go for training okay pass the examination practical assessment all that carried out then Only I will get the endorsement. So you make a career, and uh, also as you mentioned, you will be a student till you retire, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> okay, some, uh, something very interesting to know. I was also an auditor, uh, internal uh, auditor for the airline uh, in the uh, maintenance department. We carry out these internal audits okay. to ensure that the works are carried out, and okay. we are maintaining the standards. Periodically, it is done. All stations are assessed for facilities, equipments. Okay. And the standard of inspections. Okay. Will you be doing for the other airlines? We are internal audit. Internal audit. Uh, internal Probably audit. for the designated airline yeah, where yeah. you are working, yes. you will be doing this uh, doing. internal audit. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Deepak Vijayan, for uh, 
uh, giving the information regarding choosing a career in engineering in aviation industry. Mr. Deepak Vijayan, in the second part of his interview, will be speaking on safety on aviation from engineering point of view. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, G Chris TV. Thank you.